Hello everyone, it's Naomi Meredith here and we have another fun episode of the STEM Tech Co Show. I am a former classroom teacher turned current K-5 STEM teacher and I love helping teachers navigate STEM and technology in their own classrooms. So today this is a great topic whether you are remote teaching or if you're just looking for another way to boost up your read aloud time, these ideas are a great way to try something new. So let's get started with these five different ways to enhance your read aloud and you can do it virtually. This first one has been a lifesaver for me and it's using pictures and Google Drive as a mashup. I am a huge fan of Google Drive. So you just need a little bit of prep work before, but then you are ready to go, especially if you are a teacher who sees multiple classes during the week and then you're teaching the same lesson over and over. This is a really great hack and also um, you could use this when you're in the regular classroom too. So first on your phone, you need to download the Google Drive app. And so that is a free app. I love having this on my phone. It makes things so much easier. But download the Google Drive app and then log in with whatever account you use. And then with the book that you would like to read, this works best for picture books, but you could totally try like chapter books too. But the picture book or whatever you want to read, what you're going to do on your phone using just the picture app, is you are gonna take a picture of every page that you would read. So um, I'm not condoning like sharing the the book pictures with other people or putting them on YouTube or anything. This is more for your personal use, so just thinking about copyright and being considerate that way. But with the book, you have the book like on a nice surface and good lighting. Take a picture of every page so you can see the words. And then they're all in your camera roll. So you'll have like 30 plus pictures in your camera roll. So you take all the pictures of the book, then when you go into the Google Drive app, um, create a folder with the book title name, and then you're going to upload all the pictures. So before you do that, also one little tip, make sure um, you flip any pictures that are sideways. So just go through and just flip those really quick within the photo app. So you're in Google Drive, you make a folder, and then you upload all the pictures into that folder. So what's really cool is when you're sharing your screen, um, like in a Zoom call, you have Google Drive on your computer open, because they talk to each other, so your phone app and the computer app talk. So you have Google Drive open, and when you open up that folder of the book pictures, you actually, because you took the pictures in order, you can just click through each of the pictures as you read it. This has been super helpful. Like in a bind, I've had to read a book like this and it's super awkward and you're like showing the pictures in the camera and you guys know I don't know where the camera is half the time. It's super awkward, but if you do it this way, it only takes like five minutes once you get the hang of it, then you the kids can see all the pictures the whole time and you can actually see the words. If you're worried about, um, oh, I won't be able to see it, like my camera's not good enough, you guys, your phone cameras are really good. They're way better than you think. And even when you're clicking through the pictures, you can zoom in if you can't actually see it. So this has been a life-saving hack. Um, Super helpful too. My classroom actually doesn't have a document camera. So if there's a book I know I'm going to read to the kids, especially since like I teach all the kids in the school, I will do this little trick so they can see it up on my TV screen. So super helpful. Now, um, before you go and take pictures, if it's, um, there's other books out there, but before you go take pictures, double check to see if some of your favorite online platforms actually have an ebook version. So you could do this a couple ways. I know that my public library, they have ebooks that I can check out. So those are already done for me. So I could check them out and they're usually Kindle and the Kindle app actually does work on the computer also. So you can download that onto your computer and read ebooks that way. So there's been a few books that I've gotten from the library that I can use. I'll purchase sometimes Kindle books too that are picture books if it's one that I really, really like and I know I'll always use it. So that's a really great option. Also Epic Books, getepic.com has an amazing, amazing online library. I am an ambassador for them. I'm not getting paid to say this. I love their products so much. It's a free for teachers 
ebook library. So they have ebooks, audiobooks, read to me books, and videos for kids that aren't connected to YouTube. You can send kids books, but I love using it also as a teacher because then the pages are right there. So you can share your screen in your call and then flip through the pages that way. So definitely really use ebooks. That's a great way to enhance your read aloud time. Now, if you want some audio extras, you could always look at YouTube and see if there are people who've been licensed to read books. And you can, a lot of times, some are really great and have great audio versions, so you can share your screen that way. Um, also, if you check out the app Novel Effect, it is um, a free app also, so sign up and create an account, um, free for teachers. So it's a free app. And it's really neat because as you read the book, you have the app open and it makes sound effects that match the page, which really helps with that visualization and it brings that story to life. So you still have the stagnant book, but then the audio effects like just start playing, which is super fun. So you could do this with an ebook. So look in Novel Effect, the app on your phone, see what books that they have paired and then also check to see if there's an ebook. So you have the app going next to your computer with the sound. You're sharing your screen with the ebook, and it's just like a whole fun experience. So that would be really fun if you can find the book that you're looking for. Also, this next one would take some time, um, but I think it could definitely work out and the kids would be really excited to have a real life audience for your work. But as a class, you could create a collaborative read aloud. And I thought about you could do this in a few ways. If you are doing like a whole group lesson, you could pull a kid at a time and then you could record them reading a page. So maybe you have Seesaw and you have the book pages, each page in the Seesaw activity as the teacher. You share your screen, you have the kid read the page and you save their recording and you could keep pulling kids during your Zoom call so you don't even have to send anything to them separately. So you pull them out in a breakout room, you have them read the page, each kid has a different page in the book and then at the end of the day or the next day, you're like, okay, we're going to read our collaborative read aloud and you, we're going to listen to it and you could play all the pages and the kids each have contributed to that read aloud. So that would be a really cool way to do something collaborative. You could definitely actually do this in the classroom. You could do this in small groups and this could be like a project that you're creating um, virtual read alouds for a buddy class or for the school library. So you could definitely take that to the next level and have even a broader audience for their digital work. Now, this next one, I actually would do this when I was a classroom teacher. Um, if I knew I was going to be gone or if I knew a few kids were going to be gone, I would actually record myself while I was reading the read aloud or I might even pre-record it. So um, Seesaw is a great app for this. You could record yourself up to 10 minutes, but if you want to go a little bit longer, you could always use your phone, of course, or even Screencastify. Screencastify is a screen recording app, which I absolutely love. They have the free version. I pay for the premium because I like having all the extra features and unlimited time. But Screencastify is awesome because when you record a video, you could just have it record your face and then um, the kids can see the facial expressions. But then it saves it to your Google Drive right away. So you could even pre-record yourself reading like each chapter in the book. So especially if you're doing... Um, asynchronous learning. So I know some schools, you have time where you have to meet synchronously with your whole class live, but then there's also work you want them to do on the side. You could pre-record pre-record yourself reading your book and then the kids can respond um, to the read aloud that way and then you guys have a discussion when you meet back together. So especially if you're doing um, a chapter book and not everybody has the chapter book and you can't find the audio version, this is a great workaround so the kids can still have that experience. So um, this is also great for small groups like um, book clubs. I would do this often if I couldn't find the audio version, like I said, for book club so I'd have kids like read on their own and then I would send them the link to in Google Classroom to their book club book so then they could follow along again to make sure they understood what they were reading. So another great option to put support read aloud time but also small reading 
groups as well. So thank you so much again for joining me on this journey. Um, you can find all of these resources and tips if you're like, whoa, that was a lot of ideas I can't remember. Um, if you go to naomimeredith.com slash virtual read aloud, I didn't put it up on the screen today, but naomimeredith.com slash virtual read aloud. It'll be in the comments or description below. And I would love to help you out. So if you have any questions, make sure to either message me on Instagram. It's in the corner at other corner, other corner up here at Naomi Meredith underscore or definitely send me an email, contact Naomi Meredith at gmail.com. And I would love to collaborate and work with you and help you along your STEM and technology journey. Thanks so much. And I'll see you guys in the next episode.